In chapter 10 and 11, we discuss methods of summarizing data with a graph. In chapter 12, we will define numerical quantities that summarize a data set. These are the concepts that we will discuss in chapter 12. Median and quartiles, the five number summary, mean and standard deviation, and choosing numerical descriptions. Let's look at an example. The following table lists the number of home runs hit by Barry Bonds from 1986 to 2007. If we construct a stem plot for the data, we'd see that the distribution is skewed left. Using the stem plot, we could estimate what the center and spread of the data set is. However, in this chapter, we'll discuss how to precisely define quantities that summarize the center and spread of such a data set using the values in the data set themselves. A simple and effective way to describe the center and spread is to give the median and the quartiles. The median is the midpoint, the value that separates the smaller half of the observations from the larger half. The first and third quartiles mark off the middle half of the observations. To find the median, we will go through the following steps. First, arrange all the observations from smallest to largest. Next, if the number of observations is odd, then the median is the observation in the middle of the ordered list. If the number of observations is even, then the median is the average of the two observations that are in the middle of the ordered list. In both cases, you can find the center observations by repeatedly crossing out the smallest and largest observations in the list until you're left with the observations that make up the median. The next quantities we will define are the quartiles Q1 and Q3. The quartiles will help us to summarize the spread of a data set. Simply put, the quartiles are the median of the lower and upper halves of the data set. To find the quartiles, we will go through the following process. First, arrange the observations in increasing order and locate the median, M. The first quartile, Q1, is defined to be the median of the observations that are to the left of the median, M. The third quartile, Q3, is defined to be the median of the observations that are to the right of the median, M. In both cases, if there is an odd number of observations, do not include the original median in either half when finding the quartiles. If there are an even number of observations, then simply divide the ordered list in half when finding the quartiles. Let's look at an example. Below are the home run counts for Hank Aaron over 23 seasons. Let's find the median of this data set. First, we arrange the observations from smallest to largest. Next, because there are an odd number of observations, the median will simply be the center observation. In this case, it's 34. Let's see how this compares to the home run counts for Barry Bonds over 22 seasons. Again, we begin by arranging the observations from smallest to largest. In this case, n is even, so the median will be the average of the two center observations. In this case, they are both 34, so their average is also 34. Now you try one. Below are the home run counts for Babe Ruth over 22 seasons. The observations are already listed in order from smallest to largest. Find the median, the first quartile, and the third quartile. So pause the video and unpause when you're ready for the answer.
Now because there are an even number of observations, the median is going to be the average of the two center observations. So in this case we get 35 plus 41 divided by 2, which is 38. This is our median. As for the quartiles, we will locate the median of the top half and the bottom half. The median of the top half is 11, and the median of the bottom half is 47. So, the first quartile is 11, and the third quartile is 47. Now if we put the median and the quartiles together with the smallest and largest observations, we get what's called the five number summary. The five number summary gives us a quick sense as to the center and spread of a data set. It is typically written in order as shown below. With the five number summary, one can define a new graph called a box plot. Box plots show less detail than histograms or stem plots and are mainly used to compare multiple distributions. To construct a box plot, we first need the five number summary. To construct a box plot, we will first construct a box that spans the quartiles. Then a line is marked in the box to indicate the position of the median. Finally, Lines are extended from each side of the box to indicate the smallest and largest observations. Let's do an example together where we construct a box plot. Recall using Babe Ruth's home run counts, we found out that the median is 38 and the quartiles were 11 and 47. Since the smallest observation is zero, and the largest is 60, it follows that the five number summary is 0, 11, 38, 47, and 60. To construct a box plot, we'll first mark where the minimum and maximum are. Next, we'll mark where the quartiles are. Then, draw a box that spans the quartiles and draw a line on either side that extends to the maximum and minimum. Finally, draw a line in the box to indicate where the median is. Another way of describing the center and spread of a data set is with the mean and standard deviation. The mean, x bar, of a set of observations is their average. To find the mean of n observations, Add the values and then divide by n. The mean is a quantity that measures the center of a data set. The standard deviation gives us a sense as to the spread of a data set. Intuitively, it tells us how far on average an observation is away from the mean. The standard deviation is simply defined as the square root of the variance. Please review the steps below in case you have forgotten how to compute the variance. Let's look at an example where we compute the mean and standard deviation of a data set. Below are the home run counts for Barry Bonds over 22 seasons. To find the mean, x bar, we'll add all 22 observations and then divide by 22. In this case, we see that x bar is equal to 34.6. To find the standard deviation, we need to first find the variance. So, for each of the 22 observations, we will compute the square distance from the mean and then add each of these values. In this case, we get 4139.12. Note 
Next, if we divide this sum by n minus 1, we get the variance. In this case, it's 197.1. Finally, if we take the square root of the variance, we get the standard deviation s. In this case, it's 14.04. So let's now discuss how we interpret the standard deviation. First, S measures spread about the mean. Thus, we will only use it to describe the spread of a distribution when the center is described by the mean. Next, if S is equal to zero, this, is, this means that there is no spread. In other words, all the observations are the same. Now, as the observations become further away from the mean, the standard deviation becomes larger. In general, the smaller that S is, the less spread that there is. The larger that S is, the more spread that there is. So which provides a better summary, the mean and standard deviation, or the five number summary? In general, the five number summary is better if the distribution is skewed and has outliers. The mean and standard deviation are typically used if the distribution is symmetric and is free of outliers. If you are unsure as to whether a distribution is skewed or has outliers, then always start with a graph to get a sense. For instance, do you think that the mean and standard deviation, or the five number summary, would provide a better summary of the following data set? If we look at a stem plot, we'd see that the data is skewed to the right and has outliers. Thus, the five number summary would most likely give a better representation. 